G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm back on the XA sedan once more. As you can see, I've gone ahead and put the bonnet in primer. However, I did have to do some bodywork, as you can see in the, in the photos here. I did um, give it a couple of coats of filler and uh, just went about getting it roughly blocked out. It's, well, when I say roughly, I mean I did, I, I blocked it out with, with 80 grit, um, just using the hook it pads on this um, 3M workstation here. Uh, it's quite good, I quite like it because you've got the, um, you know, you've got the vacuum attachments so you can sort of hook this up to your block. I was using uh, a, ver a variety of blocks but actually that has an adapter which goes on it but I was using this one with 80 grit and also this one which I found quite good and obviously the the benefit of using this workstation is that it keeps the dust to a minimum however I do use a variety of other blocks I've got some linear blocks these ones here which you can obviously they're sort of flexible um, I find them quite good as well but yeah for, for keeping the dust down you can't beat the workstation um, sucking up all the dust as you know as you sand it off that's pretty cool anyway so the bonnet looks fairly good right now blocked it out with 80 grit went over it again with 120 and then finally with 180 and then put three coats of epoxy primer on it and it's probably by no means finished yet. I'm probably going to go over it again. I'm, well, actually, I'm thinking about doing the whole car in a uh, polyester spray filler. So I'm going to probably uh, do that later on. But for the time being, just need to sort of go around and address everything that's not finished. All right, before we get into that, just in case any of you are curious what's happening to the coupe, we'll just go over and we'll just give you a bit of an update with that. Okay, so the coupe has kind of been in the background for quite a while ever since it came back from the engineers it actually sat on the trailer for weeks and weeks finally got it off the trailer pushed it into this spot for the time being and the reason I haven't been doing anything on it is because I was tossing up as to whether to you know do final body work or whether or not I should do some trial assembly and um, you know figure things out with the mechanicals and that and I was talking to a panel beater a friend of mine who said um, well his opinion was that I should probably go ahead and you know get the thing assembled like put the whole thing together engine box do the exhausts everything um, you know fuel tank the whole works before I worry about final body work just for the obvious reasons that if you make have to make any alterations you know cuts welds or change things around a lot better to do it now than after it's had final body work done and it's in for high fill primer so i'm figuring that's what i'm going to do i'm going to go ahead and do the do this do the you call it a trial assembly or whatever basically try to put the car together as much as i can um, and see if i can get all of the um, uh, all of the mechanicals working, brakes and everything. Um, who knows, maybe I'll even take it to the point where I can take it back to the engineer and get brake testing done, but I'm not going to look too far ahead into the future. I'm just going to worry about how I'm going to put it together. Now, having said that, I need to be able to have easy access under the car and whatnot. And when we're fabricating it, I actually had a frame over here. If you look at the, over here where it's got this old Mac 1 Mustang shell, sitting I had uh, you know an RHS frame built especially for that where I had the coupe sitting on top and I was you know just gave me access and I was just using the crane to lift it on and off as I needed but uh, as the car is now where you know full full suspension and everything all doors bonnet all the panels on uh, doesn't really make a lot of sense to continue with that method so pretty much at a point where I need a hoist I, I'm going to be obviously putting the engine box in which is over here on that red stand and so I'm going to basically be figuring out which is the best way to go you know detach the box from the from the engine and put them in separately or put them in as one unit when we had it on the stand we actually put it in as one unit we just sort of pulled the box down at one end and fed it through but we did actually not have the top of the radiator support in at that stage and so I'm trying to I'm, I'm going to I'm not fully decided but I'm going to pretty much have to figure out are we going to do it the same way or are we going to you know do them in two separate units because we want to be able to have a, a way of doing it which is not going to affect paintwork later on so that's why again come back to a four post hoist we'll be able to lift it up put it down etc while it's still on its wheels so to speak 
So at the moment, that's what I've been doing. I've been sort of shopping around for a four post hoist and until we get one, which it's going to be arriving shortly. I have got one. We're, it's going to be arriving shortly. And we'll probably do another video on that one, putting it together and everything. So until then, the coop's going to sit here. And then, as I say, once that four post hoist is here, then we'll, uh, we'll get into it and do a video of setting that up. So, so in the meantime, let's get back onto this uh, sedan. Okay, so with the bodywork, where well, bodywork, with the panels the way they are now, with the gaps all done and bodywork roughed in, uh, you know, I emphasise that term roughed in because it's, it's not finished yet, though, especially the lines have to be fixed up. Um, just sort of looking around at what other things I can address and the next one, the next obvious one is the roof. So I always thought this roof was a pretty good roof. It was uh, sealed up as you can see in the green epotech. I just went over it with a block, actually that same block on that workstation, the, the rectangle one, and uh, with 80 grit. Yeah, you can still see highs and lows all through the thing. So, I mean, even to, I mean, I don't, I'm not an experienced panel beater by any means. And, you know, I probably don't have the best hand for feeling things. But, you know, having said that, I just, to me, it felt flat. But, and yet you go over it with a block and you still see all these highs and lows. So I might, um, just to demonstrate that, I might jump on the other side and, uh, and just do that last little piece. I'll put the camera on my head, I suppose, and I'll sand that last little piece and you'll just see how those highs and lows come up. All right, guys, we'll just uh, see what sort of difference it makes giving it a light block. Okay, so there's the results. You can see these low spots in the, where the paint's slightly darker. Out here, yeah. Sort of all over the place. And I noticed a lot of the low spots, they actually sanded out, so virtually the thickness of the paint was enough to fill it. So that just shows how minute some of them are. I think it also shows that these hook it blocks aren't that bad. A lot of people sort of say that they're, you know, you're not going to get accuracy with them, but I think you will. If you, A, use a sharp paper and B, don't press too hard, just let the paper do the work. So um, definitely uh, nothing wrong with them at all. So, um, and especially for me on, the, on a roof, you know, I was purposely not going too hard. So basically just drawing backwards and forwards and just using the, get, letting the paper do all the work, so. Pretty easy to spot the low spots that way, so. found where my low spots are, scuffed them up and I'm going to apply filler to them. I'm just going to wipe it down with some uh, acetone, or wipe the whole roof down with acetone that is, just to make sure it's nice and clean. So as I mentioned before I'm using the 3M Platinum Select Filler, um, everyone has their own preference I guess. I was using the um, um, Platinum Plus and it's a really really good filler however 
I noticed that I was getting more pinholes in my work and that might be just me. I tried this out as a bit of an experiment. It's a slightly different colour obviously, um, but I just found that it uh, just gave me better results. It was, first of all, nicer to, to mix, nicer to spread, and as long as you mix it properly, I find that I got a lot less pinholes. So anyway, we'll go ahead and we'll mix it up. I'm gonna, that's, see that's zeroed out. So that's zeroed out. Um, Two percent ratio is the ratio for the um, the hardener. So I'm going to so for every hundred mil you'd put two mil of hardener. I'm going to see if I can mix up two hundred mil. Okay, a bit over. Now, I probably don't need to be that fussy, but just do it for the sake of doing it. And then the filler. So we'll go for four. Honestly, don't know how accurate these scales are. Target or Kmart? I think it was Kmart. It's telling me I need another mil. Gram, I mean. I think I'm just going to quit there because that looks like plenty. All right, let's mix her up. They say you should always mix at the job. Probably makes a lot of sense. But. Here I go mixing at the bench. I should I've never used splines, but I should probably try using one. I dare say I'm not going to get much time before this starts going off just from the colour of it it's about right but you know I'm glad I didn't put any more hardener in it okay we got that and let's take that let's see what happens So I'm just going to go ahead and get it pressed into the surface first, try to eliminate as much of the pen, like pushing out the air is what I, I guess I'm trying to get at. If you don't push out the air you end up with pinholes. So there's not enough here to do the whole roof obviously, so I'm just aiming at doing just this quarter with the mix that I've got. Now, I don't know how true it is, but I've heard it said that the more spread out it is, the longer it takes to cure. Doesn't make a great deal of sense, but maybe somebody can give their opinion in the comments about that. Of course, you read all sorts of things from all sorts of experts. I'm not an expert, so I'm not going to 
really give any definitive opinions. I can say what works for me, I guess. So you can see that this filler, it's just really, really creamy. Spreads really, really nice. As I say, you've got to get all the air out. It's just normal with any filler. Now do I go ahead and put this spline over it? If I don't know what I'm doing, I may wreck what I've already kind of done, but all right, let's just see. Just assuming that you do it like this. Oh yeah. So that's kind of like left a bit of a low spot through there. Try that again. Oh yeah. Interesting. Hmm. I don't know. This is where the door closes on me. Still, okay, now it's just started to, okay, now it's just started to um, get a little cheesy. Good. So that is 200 grams of filler over a quarter of the roof. That means anything, it doesn't mean anything to me. And uh, I think the data sheet, yes, I've actually started reading data sheets. I'm as surprised as any of you might be. I think it says give it 20 minutes before you sand at a certain temperature. What does it say? Actually, I'll just clean these up first before I worry about that. Just have a little bit of acetone here. Acetone for me is the best for cleaning up your, your filler tools. Let's see what this says. Sand time, 20 minutes. Shape time 8 minutes, so work time 4 minutes, shape time 8 minutes, sand time 20 minutes and paint time after 45 minutes. So there you go. All right, so that's just about ready for uh, primer now. Basically put a one coat of filler over it, which you saw me do. And I have to say, I really like using the splines. I think you probably save a lot of filler if you finish with splines. The one skim coat of filler with splines, and there, there were a couple of small patches after that. So all in all, I didn't have to use too much filler, but 
obviously being a roof you'd rather not use any at all and I actually remembered after this is after I'd actually started recording this video that this car had actually been sandblasted previously so maybe that's why the roof has these minor distortions now they're not they're not really really bad but they're obviously show when you block it so anyway hopefully I've got most of that out so I'm going to go ahead now and um, get the rest of the car covered up masked up and um, and get some epoxy over the top of this just to seal it up hope my back masking works <laughs> don't really know what I'm doing but anyway we'll see I'll get my trusty assistant to come give me a hand now and see if we can get this plastic Right anyway guys, that about does it for this video. So I'm really happy that we've got uh, pretty much the majority of the panel work done on the car now. I've got the, obviously I need to just finish the boot off, that's not really much. And then I'm just going to go ahead and uh, do the polyester filler. And then there'll be a ton of blocking work just to try to make this thing really nice and straight. So thanks again for watching anyway. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, give us a like and a share. And we'll catch you in the next one.